Musical Monday, Musical Monday. Forget Bridgerton and Downton Abbey. Prepare for a courtship that's a bit more sappy. Musical Monday. Hello and welcome back to Musical Monday with Zach and Shade in Prob Broadway. I'm Zach. I'm Shay. And you're at Improv Broadway. And joined with us on the keys is the one, the only, Caleb Wall. The scaly dragon himself. The master of the horde, Caleb Wall. <laughs> that face, oh. <laughs> oh loving it. I love Caleb because he has the most beautiful baby face with the most manly beard and such so just beautiful juxtaposition of like pure innocence and pure sexual power. <laughs> Please, this is a kid's oh, show. Is <laughs> Rut row. I mean, he's handsome. Uh, and speaking of handsome, mm. oh, today's musical has one of the most handsome characters that fiction has ever seen. Stroll with us across the Queen's courtyard as we traverse and uh, traipse. As we promenade into a a courtship musical full of scandal and bated breath, bated breath and corsets and tea and parties, fainting and vapors and more vapors, <laughs> 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 smelling salts. In this musical called The Duke's Delish. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yes. Mm. You know, shows like uh, Bridgerton and Downton Abbey and the others, um, how they sort of (laughs) dance around sort of the sexual tension. I feel like this one just goes head first. That's right. You open up on the the couple already making out. Just furiously <laughs> macking on each other. Which is quite usually the opposite of what people want in a slow burning, yeah. y- you know, enemies to lovers uh, courtship romance. That's at least like end of act one. Yeah. yeah uh, at the least. If not way more. Uh, yeah, usually it's the end. People can go know? a whole Jane Austen book for like one kiss at the end. One kiss. And so it really took fans by surprise when the <laughs> <laughs> romance just started off with the makeup. Yeah, Immediately. But then you find out that um, that's not the couple. <laughs> yeah, the it's a play, but the camera still pans over <laughs> to another couple just going at it. <laughs> and that's not, <laughs> not the couple, the couple. either. <laughs> and then the camera pans up oh, to a mezzanine. To a mezzanine. Uh, uh, and um, a duke. Uh, leaning over. He owns the grounds, of course. <laughs> the grounds. The grounds theater, he calls it. Why does he call it that? Because he's at a mezzanine, and that's, oh, where, yes. that's, where, that's where they normally are. And what is a mezzanine? It's like the upper floor of a, of a theater. So you got like, like floor seating and then mezzanine oh, seating. Oh, okay. So yes. they're at... So the first two couples, one was in the chairs, the so other at... was in the stage, okay. and now we're up in the mezzanine. So they're at an opera. Yes, a live opera. A live opera. And he is looking out at all the audience members trying to pick his bride. Yes. Because he must pick a bride or else he He will lose lose his his inheritance. And his dukeship. And. Which is worst, who knows. And he'll lose his pinky finger. His father swore to him, (laughs) if you are not married by the third midnight of June, (laughs) then you will lose your pinky toe, your dukeship, and your estate. That's right. And his eyes fall on a beautiful, young, proper woman who has been disgraced from society because her brother was the one making out he was making out and both couples the what you remember the first two couples yes. we saw making out and this social out, casting out happens all within a couple of minutes <laughs> she walks in all of society points at her and says charlatan and hands her a mop and a bucket and she has to clean up the vomit at the opera which we all know is a common occurrence when people sing too loud <laughs> yes. 
really defies. Again, most of these <laughs> romances are about subtleties, but this one is all about just really pointing out exactly what's going on. Exactly. Which is why they shout charlatan. Char- and, then, <laughs> and then interrupt the opera to make her mop up the vomit. Yes. So. And he's seeing all of this. Mm-hmm. And he's falling desperately in love. <laughs> nah. <laughs> Okay, yeah, he wants her so bad. <laughs> you can tell I've read a lot of Jane Austen. Yeah, he wants her so bad. And so we hear this song. <laughs> as he, he proposes to her on the spot. He stands up in the mezzanine and he proposes to her. But it's very, like, logical and it has nothing to do with love. He doesn't love her. He says that over and over. I mean... He's, he does love her, but, but he's, he, saying, he's trying oh, to hide I don't it. love you, I don't love you, I don't love you. Yeah, love he's you. saying it just makes sense. I'll rise you up in your social station, and and I will have, I will keep my dukedom. And this song, um, I propose, it just makes sense. The Duke, the Duke, the Duke. The Duke, the Duke, the Duke. Oh, no. I think you're pretty, pretty nice for me. I think you should marry me. I mean, logically. I have no feelings for you. Nothing's inside my heart. But I think it's the logical decision for us to never be apart. I propose. He propose. It just makes sense. Just makes sense. I propose. He propose. It just makes sense. Just makes sense. You, so pitiful, the bottom of the rung, cleaning up slop. Join me, dear, take me by my hand and you'll rise back to the top. It will just cost you a little peck right here upon my cheek. And we'll revisit this consideration once a week. Go, oh, I propose. It just makes sense. I propose. Don't have to love each other to make our marriage work. No, we don't. And even though I don't have feelings for you, I won't be a jerk. You won't. I will take you to my house and you'll sleep in our room that's not the same room as mine. And maybe if we get close, maybe she'll have the same feelings as mine. I accept. It just makes sense. It just makes sense. I accept. It just makes sense. I propose. I accept. It just makes sense. not like the duke from Bridgerton. <laughs> he's like the duke from Moulin Rouge. Yes. <laughs> he's a disgusting, <laughs> well, slimy man. You noticed in the song <laughs> there was there was a personality shit because his persona in public is sort of this mommy gross. <laughs> hey, but when he went inward, it was oh. sort of this secret heart. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Because she kind of brings out the best in him. For so long, yeah. he's had to have this hard, crusty shell. Yeah. Of, he's basically a Darcy. So to put up appearances. Yeah, it's a facade. But deep inside, he has a soft heart. It just wants to be loved. Big old softy McDonald's serve ice cream. And this machine ain't broken. <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> Oh my. But so, yes. We carry on to the next scene. I can't wait. 
Here we are. They've proposed. It is scandalous. It is all over the papers. All uh, over the town gossip. The town gossip. Madam Higginwadam has. <laughs> She has a daily town cry where she goes with a bugle and shouts out gossip in the town square, but she tries to do it anonymously. For anyone asking, this is a direct ripoff from Bridgerton. So she tries to anonymously use her voice. She doesn't quite have the fortitude to realize that writing would be better, oh. so she just uses Well, she's illiterate. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Very yeah. few women could write. Right. So she tries to mask her voice. She uses, um, she tries to make it sound like those scary people that leave threats on your phone call. Yeah, she <laughs> had the foresight to make it sound like a distorted telephone voice. Yeah. Um. Um, but uh, but we, we see the scene after she's shouting. That's right. And she uh, uh, she goes to um, the young lady, the, the now betrothed. I can't remember her name. What was her name? Her name is Josephne. Lady Josephne. Um, <laughs> Josephne's nuts, I think. Josephne's <laughs> <laughs> nuts. Me. Josephne's <laughs> nuts, I think is what. <laughs> That's her name? Well, her, first, her surname is Nuts. And her, <laughs> and her first name is Josephine's. Okay. Yeah. Josephine's Nuts. <laughs> okay. And this is one of the reasons she's so desperate to get married. Because <laughs> her name is so unfortunate. Well, and that's quite the thing, though. Her, her mom wants her to get married, but she doesn't want to get married at all. She is right. quite set against it. Right. But she knows she must to reclaim her family's honor. Right. After that makeout debacle, yeah. the only way that she could uh, reclaim the nut's name. The nut's name. <laughs> is becoming a, becoming a duchess. That's right. And so we see her with the lady gossiper. And the lady gossiper is, is trying to tease out um, as much gossip from her as possible to get her end of the story. Sure. Why did you accept his proposal? <laughs> what is your name, Josephine's nuts? <laughs> why don't why don't you shorten your name? Stuff like that. Um, in this uh, in this saucy <laughs> number, do tell. Tell me, darling. Tell me everything. Oh, I can't write. I'll remember here in my brain when I shout it out later in my <laughs> weekly town cry. You're terrible at being anonymous, Madam Higginwater. What do you mean? Have you heard my different voices? Check this one out. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> you just showed it to me. Well, you won't tell or I'll destroy you. Shh. I've received seven proposals from men like him and every single time I wish I could follow my own whims I'm tired of this old life sad and desperate as can be I don't want to be an old maid that has to have a wedding but I have to uphold my Pretty lady that wants this marriage to last But little does the Duke know I will never show him love, oh no, no I will keep my feelings locked in a box in my heart And I'll throw away the key Do tell, do tell, do tell, do tell Do tell, do tell, do tell Tell me more, tell me more 
tell me more, this is so juicy Oh, let the words flow all loosey-goosey I need more, I need a little sip I need to engorge myself in gossip So do tell, do tell I've pledged to myself I won't let the Duke touch me Try as he might, this skin is not for free And she shouts this gossip all over town. And whether or not she masks her voice, it doesn't matter because the damage is done. Everyone knows that the Duke will be all alone on his wedding <laughs> night. <laughs> the Duke will be unduked. Undukedably. Well, she's still going to go through the wedding. And of course, they'll still be married. But there will be no consummation. <laughs> exactly. I mean, the marriage is null and void. It, <laughs> that's right. Right. So uh, the the <laughs> by law, if the dookie isn't, <laughs> <laughs> and that's what everyone calls him now because he ain't worth shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everyone think he stinks real bad. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and he realized he's he's ruined both because he was about to lose his dukedom and he really hoped that she would fall for him. And um, he goes to her and he says, uh, you don't have to marry me. You don't have to do this. I will give you what wealth I have, and I will not expect you to enter a relationship that you don't believe in. But before that, they have all these other encounters, like at the Modiste, where yes. they they pass shoulders and he bumps into her and it's filled with tension yes and another time they go on a hunting trip and he says here's how you hold your gun (laughs) and she says i can do it myself but he (laughs) holds it perfectly another ripped off scene from bridget (laughs) and lots of rita shows i think but all these happen all to culminate right to this ending moment where he says you don't have to marry me and she says you know how could i not and he says i know an easy way don't. Don't marry me. And that's how the song starts in this truly period time piece. <laughs> um, the, the, the pearl of my eye. Don't. You can just not marry me. Never have I felt such feelings in my bosom, Duke. Dukey. Don't call me that. That's what the town people call me because they think I smell like shh. But all I care about is what I smell like to you, Josephine's. You smell like juniper and water and a hint of man. I never had a smell that has been in so high of demand. Every time I pass by you, I get a whiff, I get a sniff, and I can't help but wonder or imagine what would be if I had you in my arms. I know touch is forbidden, but I can't help but imagine what it would be like to see that 
white collared shirt of yours sopping wet that's a sight that i never got to get in this courtship but i can't help but imagine what it would feel to be on your lips so even though society would tell me to let go i need you to know you're the pearl of my eye you're the oyster of my heart you're the gem of my soul you're the ruby to make me whole i have something to confess i've put my feelings on the bench but hearing your words, I'm gonna dive into this pond, make my shirt all drenched. Because I'm also sopping wet with feelings for you. And now that you reciprocated with me, I don't know quite what I'll do. I am the Duke, but I'm nothing without his Duchess. My heart has been a flutter since I proposed and you said a uh, yes. So now that I know for me you feel the same, I feel we can finally be real and end this silly game. Cause you're the pearl of my heart, the, the oyster, oyster of, of my heart. heart. Of my soul, the one to make me whole. I know that we can last forever, cause it's 1802, and I just wanna be with you. And I wanna be with you now and forever, or at least until one of us gets scarlet fever. One before the other I love you more than my own brother I don't care if we die of consumption I just want to enjoy this seduction So come close but not too close I'm gonna feel your breath inside my breath My nose is gonna graze your hair and I'm gonna take a deep inhale Oh my gosh, it's raining And we're stuck here in the woods I'm going to smile like here in Nightly Cause you're my cure and night to me And since we're stuck here in the wood I need to confess I'm often misunderstood I'm a nice guy, not a jerk I'm full of love, even though I need a little bit of work You're, You're the, the pearl, pearl of, of my eye. eye You're the oyster to my heart You're the ruby to my soul I need, I need permission from your father, Bovides. He's dead. Bovides Nuts is dead? <laughs> yes. <laughs> then I will take care of your whole family. Please. Thank you, Duke. Or may I call you by your sir name? Please. What is it? Of my eye, you're the oyster of my heart.
heart. You're the ruby of my soul. You're the one to make me whole. <laughs> and they get married. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you're done. You're done with that. After both of these, you're like, I'm out, skis. Both of these. So, both of these. Both of these nuts. Got stung by a bee and died. Yeah, right, yeah, and you'll never guess where. Uh, you know what I'm nuts for? This musical. And thank you all so much for tuning in and having a fun time with us here. We just love you watching and want you to watch more. So make sure you like, subscribe, share all the fun stuff so the algorithm knows we exist. If you want to hear more of us, go to improvbroadway.com slash musicalmonday. Join our email list. We have an improv songwriting course. We'd love to go on, like, tour and stuff. So if you know a local theater around your place, let us know where they are. We'll contact them, see if we can perform near you. And you can do that any day of the week, Tuesday through Sunday. But on this day, and no matter what day it is, when you're with us, it's always, of course. Musical Monday! Lord Bopadies, next to third! <laughs>